Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Quantipy. In the previous video we derived the Black-Scholes PDE using the delta hedging argument. By the way, many asset prices will satisfy the PDE as long as they satisfy the assumptions that we made in the derivation of the PDE, which are mainly the assumption required for the application of Ito's lemma and the assumption around the self-financing portfolio. For example, the risk-free security and the price of the stock satisfy the PDE, but S squared does not. But we'll sink our teeth into this juicy topic another day. In the context of this video, what it means is we need to specify the terminal and the boundary conditions in order to adapt the PDE to the specific security we want to price. And once we specify these conditions, we can solve the PDE numerically to obtain the asset price. But our discerning audience is expecting an analytical solution instead of a numerical solution. And to deliver on that analytical dimension, we will need to perform a few more transformations and simplify the equation. And once we have simplified the equation to the diffusion equation, the solution to which we know, then it's plain sailing. There are a couple of popular ways to go about the transformation. One uses the finance rationale, and the second achieves this by doing dimensional analysis of the variables. We will stick to the first one and leave the second one as an exercise and cover it in a future video if there is appetite for a video on this. Let's get cracking. There are many hints to suggest that the PDE is a backward equation. A simple hint is the signs of the derivatives term. A more financy hint is that we are at time small t, meaning we know the current stock price, and we have been given the terminal condition, which is the option payoff function at maturity, or big T, and we want to determine its current price. This requires that we go backward in time, away from big T. And from the probability perspective, we are computing expectation, and we know expectation is a backward operator, as we are interested in the current expected value of a future payoff. So we need to reverse the time, which we can easily do by changing the time variable to designate remaining maturity instead. So remaining maturity will be zero at the terminal date, and capital T minus small t which we define as tau for the rest of this video at any intermediate valuation date t. The maths will think we are going from 0 to t minus t. It is good practice to relabel the functions slash dependent variables whenever we transform the variables. So we will represent the stock price as a function of the new variable by tilde, and s tilde naught now represents the price at maturity, whereas s tilde tau represents the current price. We do the same with the option price. We reverse the time, so the PDE is giving the value at an earlier date, so we should transform the s and v into their future equivalents as well. We know the stock follows geometric Brownian, so its value at the terminal date is given as follows. By the way, we have solved this equation in the geometric Brownian motion video, so please do watch that video if you would like a refresher. We ignore the stochastic term, because the PDE will take care of the weights. So now, this is like the median of the stock price at maturity, given its current value. And we would like to get rid of the s in the coefficients of the two derivatives. So we define the new variable as the log of this. Because we know the derivative of the log of s is equal to 1 over s, we use this to shave off the s and s squared in the two derivatives. And finally, we transform the current value of the option price or the premium to its forward value and represent this by f. So when we do these three transformations, the PDE will become a forward PDE with constant coefficients, which is easier to solve. So let's start with the transformations. We start with the time reversal. As we said a couple of minutes ago, we will represent the transformed stock price and the transformed option price with tilde. 
derivatives with respect to S doesn't change. For the derivative with respect to T, we need to transform it into a derivative with respect to tau. So we apply the chain rule. We can easily calculate the derivative of tau with respect to T. Now we can make the substitutions into the PDE. And we are done with the first transformation, which is we transformed backward PDE to a forward PDE. Let's tackle the second transformation. We relabel the functions slash dependent variables whenever we transform the variables. Now, the derivative with respect to both s and tau will change. First, we change the derivative of v with respect to s to a derivative with respect to x, and we use the chain rule. And calculating the derivative of x with respect to s is trivial, so we get. And for the second derivative, we differentiate the first derivative again. And then apply the product rule. And then apply the chain rule to the second term. And finally, substitute 1 over s for the derivative of x with respect to s. And we have the derivative with respect to s. And we can simplify the second derivative by factoring 1 over s squared. Part of the same transformation, we also need to transform the derivative with respect to tau because x is a function of tau as well. When tau changes, the option price changes, but x also changes, and we know v is also a function of x. So that will induce an additional change in v. The mathematical name for this is total derivative. Now, we can easily calculate the derivative of x with respect to tau, and substitute into the expression we get now we have all the derivatives, so we can plug these into the PDE, where we had cancelled the s and s squared terms. Now we rearrange the third and fourth terms to isolate the first and second derivative terms. The second and the penultimate terms cancel. And we are left with a simpler expression. We move on to the final transformation. Let's invert this relationship first to make the comparison with the PDE clearer. The first and second derivatives with respect to x are straightforward. For the derivative with respect to tau, we apply the product rule from calculus. And we know how to determine the derivative of the exponential, and we get. We substitute these into the PDE now. So the second and last terms cancel, and we divide by the exponential of negative r tau to get the heat equation. Bam! So we have transformed the Black-Scholes PDE to the heat equation as promised. A teaser. We will solve this in the next video to get the Black-Scholes formula. By the way, you will need to apply the same transformations to the terminal and the boundary conditions when you derive the pricing formula for an option. Let's quickly go through the transformation of the terminal condition of a call option, which pays the maximum of zero and S minus a strike price at maturity. First, we substitute the tilde versions to reverse the time, which is straightforward, familiar territory. Next, we transform s into x, and again, you were expecting this. We invert that second transformation to get s in terms of x, and then substitute 0 for tau so that s is equal to the exponential of x. And finally, we need to write v in terms of f, as we did in the earlier part of this video. And again, we invert the third relationship to write v in terms of f and then substitute 0 for tau, so they are equal. And that's it. We have reduced the Black-Scholes PDE to the diffusion equation as promised, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.